we have decent knowledge of swap and pause forms in this presentation I will solve three examples and also explain few tricks so that you can solve questions directly in your exam we will start with example number one in a minimal swap form number of min terms in the logical expression a or b complement and c are so we have a logical expression let's say it is for function f and it is equal to a or b complement and c this is the representation that we call as the minimal swap form so we have the minimal swap form we want the canonical or standard swap form so that we may have the number of min terms we have to count the number of min terms when we have the canonical swap form so first thing that we have to do in this problem is to find out the canonical swap form from this minimal swap form and then we have to count the number of min terms and that will be our answer so let's start with it we have to follow the same steps that we discussed in the last presentation the step number one is to find out the number of variables and also what are their names and uh, I can see there are three variables a b c so let me write it down we have three variables and uh, they are a b and c right and step number two we have to find out the absent variables so this is let's say term number one this is term number two in term number one you can see we have a we don't have b it is absent and we don't have c in the same way we will check for term number two in this we don't have a but we have b in complemented form we have to only find out the variables present or absent you don't have to worry about this complement and we also have c so in term number one we don't have b and c whereas in term number two we don't have a and in step number three we will and one and uh, we will end these ones number of times the variables are absent we don't have b so this one is for b we don't have c so this one is for c i have already explained these things why we are ending one with the present variables in the last presentation and uh, for this term we have b and c but we don't have a so we will end one for this a now i can write this one as b or b complement this one this one as c or c complement and in this term we already have b complement and c and we will write this one as a or a complement now we only have to open this brackets by using the distributive law and uh, we will do it quickly a and b or a and b complement and c or c complement is there from this we have a b complement c or a complement b complement c and uh, now we will open these two brackets we have a b c a b c complement a b complement c or a b complement c complement and these two terms will come as it is a b complement c or a complement b complement c now we have to find out if the main terms are repeated a b c is not repeated a b c complement is also not repeated a b complement c is repeated you can see it is repeated a b complement c complement is not repeated a complement b complement c is also not repeated so we will eliminate this a b complement c there is no need to write it two times because you already know a or a is equal to a so we are using this property of boolean algebra and finally we will have our canonical form as a b c or a b c complement or a b complement c or a b complement c complement and finally a complement b complement c so how many min terms are there one two three four five so we have five min terms in the canonical form and answer is option number c 
so we have solved this example number one and now we will move to example number two and it says with two variables maximum possible min terms and max terms are so we have two variables let's say a b are the two variables and we have to find out the maximum number of min terms and maximum number of max terms when we have two variables as a b or any other variable that you want to take so how to approach for this problem you already know when we have two variables when we have two variables we have four possible combinations a complement b complement a complement b a b complement a b these are the four possible combinations and uh, we write min terms we write min terms when the output is high and we write max terms when the output is low this is something you already know and uh, if all the possibilities for this two variables when a is 0 b is 0 a is 0 b is 1 a is 1 b is 0 and uh, both of them are 1 and uh, for all these four cases if we have output equal to 1 this is possible right then we have four min terms and if all the outputs are low then we have four max terms and uh, in question we have to find out maximum possible so definitely it is possible to have four min terms and four max terms for two variables so we can generalize it if we have n variables then uh, we have two to the power n two to the power n min terms or max terms so this is something that you have to keep in your mind the maximum possible min terms and the maximum possible max terms are 2 to the power n for three variables we have eight min terms the maximum possible min terms and uh, eight max terms as well so in question there are two variables so simply we have four as the maximum value of min terms and the max terms so option b is correct and we are done with the example number two as well and uh, the last example is very important this one is very important for n equals to 4 n is the number of variables so we have four variables what is the total number of logical expression first we will find out for n equals to 2 then we will generalize the case and we will find out for n equals to 4 so let's start with it for n equals to 2 when we have two variables and let's say the variables are a b so the first thing that we can have is 1 right the second thing is 0 then we can have a a complement when both a and b are 1 it means we have 1 1 or 1 is 1 1 and 1 is 1 when both a and b are 0 then also we have 0 and uh, we can have b as 0 and a as a so we have a a as a complement b as 0 so we have a complement and uh, in the same way we have a b complement a complement b a b and you cannot write b a as an independent case because a b is equal to b a this is the mistake most of the students do in this type of problems the next thing is a or b and again b or a is same as a or b then we have a complement b or a b complement and a b or a complement b complement you can also have b or b complement a or b complement a complement or b a complement b complement a complement or a b complement so these are the possible logic expressions that we have from the two variables and let's see the number of logic expressions that we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and 16 so in total we have 16 logical expressions for two variables let's generalize it 16 for two variables so I can write it as 2 to the power 4 
2 to the power 4 is 16 and we have two variables so I can write this 2 is representing the variable so if we have n variables if we have n variables then the total number this is only a single m n u m b r the total number of logical expression is 2 to the power 2 to the power n so this is a very important thing that you should remember it is very important and uh, you can directly find out the number of logical expressions when you have when you have the variables as 4 5 6 because you cannot write all these possibilities we can do it for two variables easily but when the variable increases it is very difficult to write all the possible logical expressions so you can remember this formula 2 2 n where n is the number of variables and you can have your answer for n equals to 4 let's see what we have we have 2 to the power 2 to the power 4 so 2 to the power 4 is 16 so we have 2 to the power 16 I will use my calculator for this purpose 2 to the power 4 is 16 and uh, we want 2 to the power 16 so 2 to the power 16 it gives 65536 so it is equal to 65536 and this is the answer now you can see it is nearly impossible to write down 65,536 logical expressions for four variables. So you can remember this formula and directly have your answer. This is all for this presentation. If you have any doubt regarding any part of this lecture, you can ask in the comment section. And this is the last lecture on swap and pause form. From the next presentation, we will start a new topic. So see you in the next one.